The Super 6 Touring Car Series welcomes round three this weekend and there is no room to rest on past strategy for the win. Competitors must negotiate a new format. Harley, what do you make of the format? What are the changes? Well, it's, uh, it's really interesting. Uh, in the past, we've always had the three short sprint races uh, over the weekend. And this, this weekend, it's two long endurance races. And uh, it's three times as long as our normal races. So that creates a lot of things. You have to think about fuel. You have to think about uh, how the, the weight in the back of the car as the fuel goes down affects the handling. The weather can change, all sorts of things. And the pit strategy, you've got to make sure you pit at the right time. So very difficult. But you showed in uh, practice that you don't mind with your back against the wall, the rainy conditions, but you came out on top. Yeah, we've got the calf absolutely flying in the wet, which is great. So we're praying for a little bit of rain in the race. Um, we're still working on it in the dry. I think we'll get there. I'm sure you will. Pressure is mounting not to concede points as one of three chances to impress is lost. Every year at Winston Motor Raceway, the Super 6 Touring Car Series, supported by Dial Before You Dig, rock up for a pair of long distance races. It's the Dial Before You Dig Challenge. We're looking forward to this, backing up after a thriller race yesterday evening here at Winton that had Travis Indoor take the race when Ben Grice was second. It was a wild affair. There were cars spearing off the road at the start. The championship contenders were in trouble. We caught up with the race one winner after a dramatic affair on Saturday evening. Um, had a good start, but then yeah, coming into turn one and there's top three, Jamo, uh, Gavin Kane had a bit of a touch up and they went spearing off and everyone was just going every which way. And then um, I think Luke Westall was in front and then Jason Leosoni, I think that's how you spell his name, or say his name. Um, yeah, that was sort of us three and then I sort of pegged off a couple of them and got into lead and had a fairly decent gap, had about a 10 second gap, which was good. Gary O'Brien joins me in commentary for this. Gary, it was a wild affair race one, had all sorts of stuff going on. There's been some penalties imposed on some of the drivers in the bottom half of the top 10 for race two, but this could be interesting. It could be, and of course we've got the compulsory pit stop as well, and when you think about a, a 30 second minimum that they all have to stop for, you think they'd all come out the same? They don't always do that. Yeah, plenty of dramas. Uh, Lindor, a great winner yesterday. Ben Grice in good form. It's great to see him back at the front of the dial before he did Super Sixes field in his second round after dramas at Sandown Raceway, third round I should say, in that car. So we're ready for a start. Look, Westall has an onboard camera. Ben Grice has a camera too. There'll be plenty of action from his car. Away we go from the front of the field. Lindorf in that silver Commodore. Away nicely. Watch for Gavin Ross in the green car too. As they go down to that hot spot at turn one. Yeah, Ben Grice into second. Kane Baxter Smith flipping up the inside briefly. And I think Ross is going to get him back out of turn two. He does so. Jason Leon Cheney had a bad start. He's back in about fifth or sixth position as we see car number four, Tony Adino, come back onto the track after going off at turn one. Yeah, he's going to be almost at the back of the field. Gavin Ross, brilliant in qualifying. Uh, great job. The pole sitter unfortunately got pushed off the road, shuffled down the field and had it all to do in race one. But a solid start from that bright green Commodore. This time round, look at Gricey working hard on the lead up to turn seven for the first time. And well, Westall uh, tried to get under Leon Cheney into turn eight. Wasn't going to happen. As we watch our race leaders, Ben Grice leading the Ford charge in second position just ahead of Kane Baxter Smith. A good start from Baxter Smith, too, really putting in a good performance. Big field of Super Sixes sorting themselves out. There's a guy coming through the field. Sean Jamison had dramas in race one. Well, he could have won yesterday's race, but unfortunately uh, had broke a gearbox and had to start the, this race in the back of the field. And should have won, was miles in front, too, Gary. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, really disappointing for Jamo. Have a look at this fight, though. This is uh, Kane Baxter's fifth, trying to hold out Ross on the recharge and locks up the front brakes big time as he goes into turn 11, swings it around. And the others to watch out there, Chris Lillis, back in the championship winning car from the last two years. The ex-Simon Tabernor car, that's a pretty good bit of metal, probably the most successful saloon car of the last four or five years since the Heinrich era, I would have said. Very good car. <laughs> as opposed to the Heinrich maneuver. That too, we're still looking in the thick of the action. There's a move down the inside. That was uh, Benny Grice. I think he's in the thick of it too with Gavin Ross. That's Leon Cheney Leon just Cheney, ahead yeah. of Baxter Smith and uh, Luke Westall's coming through. Lillis trying to take the line behind him. They're all over the place on this one and Baxter Smith was complaining early in the week about oversteer in his, I think about understeer in his car, even in the wet. 
So this is a look down at turn one. Tony That's Adino going off. save too. Yep, he did very well all the way over from Western Australia and rejoins at the back of the field. Yeah, he rejoined in 18th. So a long way back, got it all to do. So compulsory pit stop in this race. It's a 30 lap affair. Now Time it, stop. Now it's getting interesting because uh, Bryce is under pressure from Ross trying to atone. He finished the race yesterday with a broken gearbox of all things as well. So he wants to get back up and put the pressure right on their race for you. Great to have Bryce here at the front of the field as we said at the top of this race. Really struggled at Sandown. In fact, put a car on its roof there. That same one, actually. Yep, they uh, did a massive job getting that car back on the road. But it's good to see him back in the front. He likes this category, Ben Bryce. It suits his driving style. The old shoulders out. Get the elbows out. Don't mind having a bit of a, a rugby tackle if you need to. Get right in the thick of it. And it suits his style and his personality. Yeah, and at the moment he's chasing Travis Lindoff, the race one winner. He won that race pretty easy. But the thing is that Grice and, and Jason Leon Cheney had such a massive dice. On the last lap, they changed the place twice before Grice just got ahead and at the finish. Yeah, it was a tenth of a second or less as they crossed the line. But... It was a thriller. You've got to feel for Travis Lindorf. He did such a good job out in front as we watch Gavin Ross going up the inside of Gricey for yep. P2 and 3 and gets it done. A little bit of a bump as he goes past, but that's that's normal in uh, Super that's, 6 touring car racing. Yeah, that's part of the course here. I was going to say, feel sorry for Lindorf because everyone at the racetrack was looking at that battle for second and third and not at him winning the race by 25 seconds. Yeah, amazing uh, off the start of that race and that he started out of six, but it was like the seas parted for him at turn one. He just went sailing on through. By the end of the lap, he was leading. Gold Coast Company, high transport, jumping on. Grice this weekend, finance easy on the car as well. They backed him in the Swift Series last year where he was oh so exciting. And look who's uh, chasing him down, Jason Leon Cheney, the two that battled it out yesterday. And it's spending a lot of time together here at Winton, and Leon Cheney's going to look down the inside at turn one, but Grice has the line. Two Commodores lead the way. The Falcon sits third. Another Commodore in fourth at the moment. Then we go back to Luke Westall. And back to Smith, two more Fords. And look who's moving up behind him. It's uh, Sean Jamison from the back of the field, already making great progress. This category had a top 10 shootout as well, Gary, uh, on Saturday before race one. That's uh, part of this dial before you dig challenge round. And it was very interesting. Uh, Jamo banged in a 138 and a half, less than a tenth of a second up on Gavin Ross. Baxter Smith was third and Lanchini fourth. But I think they enjoyed the idea to get a, a lap in the spotlight. They, they certainly did. And uh, as a result of that, it's become a bit of an institution now. And they're going to be doing it from now on at Whitney at this particular meeting. Yeah, it's a good thing for the Super Sixers to uh, get involved here. They really enjoy it. This is a good fight for the lead too between the two Commodore drivers. Well, they've been battling it out since the beginning of the season. Uh, sand down three races, so we're ne never more than this far apart. A little bit different over at Malalar. Uh, uh, pa the pack of the tyres car just wasn't happy on that circuit as Ross sort of headed away there, and now they're back on even par. Down into turn 11. Another lock up from Ross. He's right in the ragged edge of breaking down there at turn 11. Grice a little bit wide. And look how much Wessels both up. Jason Lee and Cheney into the pits. One of the first ones to do his CPS, and there's a few following you in. It looked like Baxter Smith and Jamison went in as well. So slurless. Yep, from eighth place, just in the back half of the top ten. Rolling in, so 30-second pit stop. And this is just a matter of pulling up. The 30 seconds is then pulled out. You can see the paddles going out. Their numbers are on it. They'll make their uh, stop. You think they'd all come out the same. It doesn't always work out that way. Some people tend to lose a bit of time for whatever reason. Maybe they're just a bit trepidatious in taking their entry and their exit. Yeah, well, it's, it's pit in and pit out. It's the total transit time that's what costs you. Here goes the former race leader in the 51 car. Just rolling back out of the lane, and it's busy behind as well. Like a NASCAR run out of the, out of the pits, and Littler's actually jumped ahead of Baxter Smith. I don't know if you'll get into trouble for that one. Well, as long as he didn't go over the 40k an hour speed limit, uh, he had the momentum, didn't he? And Baxter Smith wasn't quite up to speed. Grice here in front of uh, the Westall car and Jamison right behind them. So they're battling for position. And certainly uh, Grice is wanting to repeat what he did yesterday. Right on board the Falcon. Transley Solution forward out of New South Wales. Now this is a look, Gary, at what happened. Top of your screen. Side by side down pit lane, plenty of room there, so there's probably no drama in that, but they're clearly having a look, and this is on board. The commentary is going, well, 
what's going on? What do I do? Do I go past? I wonder if perhaps in doing that, he did go quicker than the uh, prescribed 40k an hour speed limit. That might have been the drama as Bryce pits from the top three position. Here's Gavin Ross on the screen at the moment, the Black Hall engine's entry. So he's going on longer in this race. And followed through there by, it looked like, Phil Gray in the Falcon. That car yesterday was uh, all straight to brown rather than black and green. It's so wet and muddy off the racing line. Here's Grice. Stop, don't get to the line. And you can finally clear 40 k's an hour and get back into it properly. So he'll funnel out back somewhere in that leading mix. So here's the race leader into the lane, followed by Luke Westall in the 27 car. And looks like uh, Sean Woodhouse would be the next one in, the Sopranos pizza car, the highway patrol officer from Victoria. You wouldn't want him to get done for speeding in pit lane, would you? That's 40 right. k's an hour. <laughs> At 41, <laughs> sorry, penalised. So Travis Lindorf circulating. Ross in the lane. Remember, these two dicing for position. So this is the battle for the lead. They're very Formula 1. They've got the air blower on the grill there, trying to get some cool air. And at least so we know those two watches must be set at the same time because they, they leave at the same time. Yeah, and down into turn one, Lindorf holds on to the lead. And if anything, he's extended his margin. So some good laps while Ross pitted. Remember, they were nose to tail when the stop sequence started. So if anything, Lindorf has extended his race lead out in front. Ah, dramas, and that is a missing gear stick. That looks like the Jason Leoncini car that's in the pits there. Obviously a problem. Such a good run from them yesterday, and uh, the man he was dicing with, we see on screen at the moment. He's just broken a gear stick, Gary. <laughs> ben Grice has just broken a gear stick through turn eight. Oh, and that's Baxter Smith rejoining the circuit. He's had it off, and oh, there's going to be contact. There is. Just wing mirrors, that was a hairy moment, but Ben Grice has broken a gear stick. We just saw Lancini in pit lane, and Ben Grice has had the same problem. Well, at least we know it's not related to one brand or the other. Here we have a veteran in an ex-motorcycle racer in Rick Gill, followed by a novice or a, a viewer in the report, David Wright. Only his second race meeting. Works for Paul Panisi as a mechanic. Stop and go penalty for the 64 car. We sort of picked that one, didn't we? Uh, we thought he might have been a bit uh, trepidatious, or not trepidatious, but uh, impetuous in getting yes. out of the pits. So that is Chris Lewis they were from P5 too. So he was running well inside the top five, and that's uh, disappointing for him. He's going to have to go through the pit lane at 40 k's an hour. It did look like he was going a little bit too quick. That onboard replay we saw certainly looked like he was going too fast. Uh, as a result, he will have to pit. Here's a big brake lock up from Mark Primer down the inside. The dial before he did car. He was about to dial because he was about to end up in the mud. And uh, just slips uh, past Glenn Possilweight for a second uh, before the, uh, the former super sprint racer, first race mating for him, gets the spot back. So good racing, good avoidance from Possilweight there to uh, not be involved in a massive accident at a high speed part of the racetrack. Primer got the thing stopped, but Again, these two going at it. This is turn two. And, uh, oh, oh, gee, squeezed him wide there, did Prim. Yep, and someone looking to go up the inside of them. That's Grice. You can see the easy finance on the front of that car, so. So he has stopped, Gary. He stopped and they put a new bolt in the gear shifter. So he's down track position a little bit now. 17th at the moment and trying to get those spots back. So that's really cost him a potential podium finish and it may well cost him on the round results as well after that great finish yesterday. Here's our race leader on to his final lap. Travis Lindolf, Gavin Ross in the background and Sean Jamison. There's our top three as they head off on their final lap. Well, good comeback from Jamo after his dramas in race one to get back to the podium in a field as competitive and as close as this. He really did have one hand on that trophy yesterday until the gearbox broke. Yeah, rather much a uh, Achilles heel with both the Ford and the Holden in this category at the moment. And... Uh, uh, something they need to work on or perhaps not to be hard on. Well, hard on the gear, I reckon. Gear, <laughs> gear shifters in this race. Liam we, Seney and Gricey, we saw it happen on Grice's car. Oh, they're speaking of Grice, he's um, parked off the side of the road in the background there. Further dramas. Unfortunately, this is the last lap, so he won't have to sit there for too long. It's been a rough day for Ben. Not so much for this guy. What a performance this has been by Travis Lindorf, a man that is 
and looking a lot like a potential champion in the Super 6 Touring Car Series. You know, towards turn 10 on the final occasion, here's Gavin Ross in second. As he goes down to turn 10, chasing the race leader, he just can't quite bridge that gap. Just a bit too much at the moment. It's about two seconds by the look of it. Yeah, and two seconds too much with two corners to go. Well, what a performance has been. An unlikely winner, it must be said, in race one. But he earned his one and did it all his own way. Travis Lindorf out of the final corner and onto the pit straight here at Winton Motor Raceway. The teams will be cheering them home across the line on the start finish straight. Well done, Travis Lindorf. He is the dial before you Nick challenge winner at Winton Motor Raceway. The Super 6 Tourers. An entertaining one, that. Well done, Travis. Uh, great race victory. Gavin Ross home in second place. Fought him all the way into the setting sun here at Winston Motor Raceway. Jamo was third from the back of the field in front of Luke Westall, David Wright, an excellent fifth in front of Kane Baxter Smith. Rick Gill completed the top seven as we go through the field down to Phil Gray in 16th place. We go down and catch up with the winners after an exciting race. Yeah, yeah, well, it was. It was um, starting from the front, I thought I had a bit of pressure. I knew Gav would be coming through and Jamo, so yeah, so Gav drove really well and just had to hold him off for the whole race, which was hard work. It was hard work, but in the end, it was worth it because Travis Lindorf regains the Super Sixers lead after a couple of rounds now. Gavin Ross second, Kane Baxter-Smith third and first of the fours in front of Luke Westall with Harley Killen rounding out the top five. Well, great performance by well, that man this weekend, but everyone in, uh, on the podium was exceptional and a great dial before you did challenge 